Welcome to a new vlog. Today we're going to be talking about reverse battery protection and I'm going to be showing you a couple of methods for achieving this protection but I'm going to be focusing specifically on low power designs where you might be using let's say a uh, coin cell battery. Because if we're talking about higher input voltages battery protection is pretty simple. You can simply add an inline Schottky diode if the input voltage is reversed, the diode will be reverse biased and it will block the current flow. There is about 0.5 volts voltage drop on your diode, but if you have something like 9 volts input into a 5 volt regulator, there's plenty of margin to afford losing half a volt. There's also the power dissipation to consider in that case, so you multiply the current with the voltage drop and you get your power dissipation into the diode. You pick an appropriate diode capable of dissipating that, and the problem is solved. Now when you start talking about low power devices, specifically those powered by coin cells, it gets a little tricky to get some reverse polarity protection into your circuit. Because our battery voltage is now just 3 volts, we can't afford losing 0.5 volts on our input diode. That will ruin our battery life. It will waste the little precious energy we have stored in the coin cell. And that might prevent our circuit from powering up. So in order to illustrate this, I have created this uh, little circuit. It's basically a small board with an 80 tiny microcontroller, which is just uh, blinking an LED, all powered from a CR2032. And the PCBs for this uh, project were ordered from PCBWay.com, which is the sponsor of this video. I opted for the standard service with green solder mask, standard thickness 1.6 mm, uh, hassle lead free finish because sometimes you just don't need the higher spec PCBs. The circuit is simple so you can go with the standard setup which can be cost effective. And just a quick side note here, when I design small boards uh, like these to explain a circuit or to prototype something without having a uh, final use, I try to bring out some test points because it happened to me uh, more than once that at some point I need to prototype a different circuit, a new idea based on uh, the same chip or a similar chip in the same package. So I just grab one of these old boards from my stash and I'm good to go. So it's always a good idea to bring out a few test points, a few IOs that might be useful in a future project. Now if we look at the typical CR2032 datasheet, we can see the discharge curve goes down to 1.8 volts and our MCU of choice, uh, the 80 tiny 48 can also work down to 1.8 volts. So that means we can extract all the juice from this CR2032 battery, uh, but it's pretty obvious that you do not want a diode in there, wasting 0.5 volts and causing your MCU to brown out much earlier. So in this case, uh, there are two ways the protection can be implemented. It can either be done at a uh, connection physical level or at the electrical circuit level. Pretty much all uh, good battery sockets uh, or connector manufacturers will try to implement some form of protection in the battery socket so that the user either cannot physically insert the battery backwards or if it's inserted it does not connect electrically. So for example I use this battery socket on my board and uh, if the battery is inserted correctly everything is good but if you insert it backwards you can see the little tab on the side which is supposed to connect to the top side of the battery doesn't quite reach all the way to uh, touch the negative tab on the battery. So this is clever engineering at the connector level but what happens if you are forced to use a, a cheaper connector like this uh, single stamped and folded piece of metal. Now uh, here is a circuit that uses this type of connector and with this type of connector it, it is really easy to insert the battery backwards and your circuit or the battery uh, can be damaged in the process. Now we start talking about protection at the electrical circuit level and the method I like to use to achieve this level of protection is with a uh, low side end channel MOSFET. This is the schematic of the circuit I'm talking about and it's very simple, just a MOSFET and a resistor and you can pretty much mirror this on the high side if you'd like to use a P-channel MOSFET but typically N-channel MOSFETs have advantages like lower cost, better availability, lower RDS on so most of the times you will prefer to use uh, an N-channel version. 
And you could also argue that the uh, gate limiting uh, resistor is not necessary because the current into the gate is pretty much zero. But if you're thinking about putting a product on the market and getting safety certifications, you need that resistor in there to protect for a short circuit, either by a uh, failing MOSFET or through some other defect in the circuit that could short the gain to drain. The way this circuit works is pretty simple and I'll skip the details of how the current first starts flowing through the uh, body diode of the MOSFET then the MOSFET turns on but in very simple terms you basically need to know that when you have a positive voltage on the gate the MOSFET will turn on and start conducting. One of the important parameters you need here is the VGS, the gate to source threshold voltage which needs to be as low as possible to ensure the MOSFET will open at low voltages. But that shouldn't be a problem to uh, find in a, in a specific MOSFET. There are MOSFETs that open perfectly fine at VGS of 1.8 volts. And you might also want to look at the current and power rating to make sure you're not exceeding those. But once again, it should be pretty easy to find an N-channel MOSFET that meets the criteria. For example, the one I have in my circuit, which is a very cheap MOSFET, the DMG1012, has a VGS of 1 volts. And if we look at the RDS on figure for a gate voltage of 1.8 volts, which is likely the lowest we're going to see, we have about 0.5 ohms RDS on. Now, let's say our circuit is taking 5 milliamps. We expect 2.5 milliwatts of power dissipation on our MOSFET, which is perfectly acceptable. But you can certainly find MOSFETs with better specs if you'd like to optimize uh, this uh, parameter. Now, you might think, why do I even need to care about protecting against uh, the reverse battery scenario? The CR2033 is a small battery. It doesn't have a lot of energy, it has some internal resistance preventing you from discharging high currents, so why do I care about its protection? Well, all of that might be true, but when you start getting into regulation requirements, if you plan to put a product on the market, it will go through testing and they will test for reverse battery protection. You most likely cannot get your product certified uh, if it doesn't have uh, this form of protection and because it's just a few uh, extra cents for a MOSFET and the resistor I would say it's well worth to implement the protection at the circuit level. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it. Maybe you'll even use this form of protection into your next project. As always you can support the channel via Patreon to keep these videos coming and if you're interested in the little board I created, the source files are available on my GitHub, which is linked below. And I don't think I'll be offering this particular board on my Tindy store. It's a small, pretty much useless board, but you can check out the other projects I offer on Tindy. I will put a link on screen right now. Thank you for watching this video and let me know in the comments if you've used this type of protection in uh, your designs or maybe a different uh, protection method. I would love to hear about it and I will see you next time.